Let's talk about gas pumps in train screw chillers and how to troubleshoot them. The gas pump is an alternative method of using a oil recovery system or an eductor system. And what it is doing is there's a check valve here. This is at the bottom of the evaporator. So, so here is the actual gas pump itself. So we've got this cylinder, little chamber here. Here's your evaporator. We've got the drain line coming off of the evaporator. Uh, there's a check valve right here. Here's a solenoid feeding back up to the top of the evaporator. We also have a line coming from the discharge um, over, should be, I think right here. We have a line coming from the discharge side of the system, and then we have a oil return line processing back up to the compressor. Now that's not depicted in this other photo. So we don't have that fourth line actually represented here, but it is there. Okay, so that is what the gas pump looks like in, in real life compared to the uh, diagram here. So we see our line coming from the condenser and that feeds into the gas pump. We've got our line that is our evaporator drain. Now keep in mind, this is a falling film evaporator. This evaporator maintains a very small amount of uh, liquid refrigerant in, in the bottom. This chiller uses a liquid level sensor right over here and it's right at the bottom that we're using to control our EXV here. So as this liquid level floats up and down, we open and close EXV, feeds in, and we, we've got a very small amount of liquid refrigerant in this falling film evaporator, which means that this gas pump is able to just pull right off of the bottom of uh, the evaporator and still capture that oil latent refrigerant that's sitting in there. Uh, so with this particular design, if this gas pump is not working correctly, then we will start to stack uh, oil in our evaporator, which will lead to low pressure issues and, and the sort. We'll have high approach values, stuff like that. So the sequence of what's happening here is we will close the high side of this uh, uh, from the condenser. We'll close this discharge line, solenoid. And if memory serves, there should be another solenoid up here on the oil return line as well, coming back into the compressor. Now there's also a filter dryer here. So we pass as this, this gets returned back up into the compressor or pass it processing through a dryer. As we talked previously, water will stack on top of the refrigerant. It's going to be in, a, in the same basic area that the oil is going to be. So if we did happen to have water stack in here in addition to the oil, then this filter dryer that's up here off the side of the compressor will be able to capture that as we feed back into the compressor, as well as any acidity, acidity or trash or anything that's, that could possibly be there. So that's a line that's not represented on this diagram. And I'm pretty confident there is a solenoid valve up here that controls this line. So what happens is during the um, recovery cycle, discharge gas, the condenser gas, and the recovery line will be closed via the solenoid. And what's going to happen is the liquid refrigerant in here is going to be able to move past this check and it's going to drain into this gas pump and the say vapor in here is going to then f f feed its way back up through opening this uh, vent uh, solenoid for the low pressure side. And so it creates this little circuit where the liquid and oil can drain down and then the uh, whatever gases are in there can can move out so that it's not like trying to gurgle the gas in here back into the like that's not going to work we need a complete circuit so this allows us to create a complete circuit to allow the uh the oil latent liquid to drain into the pump itself now once we now this is all based off of time okay the the, the circuit uses a time sequence to control this so once we hit our uh timer we will close this vent solenoid and then we will open the return solenoid up here and the discharge gas or the condenser gas solenoid here and similarly to a so one of the benefits to an eductor we're actually using that discharge gas to help vaporize some of that liquid refrigerant 
so that we're not actually putting straight liquid back into either our oil sump or our compressor or anything in like that case. So in this particular case, if the discharge gas wasn't there, it wouldn't, it, when we tried to pull that back in, we would, uh, we would likely end up causing the liquid refrigerant to draw directly into the screws of the compressor, which is not good. We can't have that. So by having this uh, line here, now it does more than just vaporize the liquid refrigerant, okay? By having this here, that's one of the benefits of what that discharge gas is doing. So the liquid refrigerant, not the oil, but the liquid refrigerant can get vaporized, which I think is where the, the whole term gas pump kind of comes from. All, all that gets turned into a, say, a medium pressure liquid because it's low pressure liquid sitting in here. We're sending high pressure um, gas or vapor into it. That turns it into a medium pressure, mostly, if not complete, uh, vapor with some oil, right? With a lot of, well, ideally, you know, a decent amount of oil. So then we can then use this gas to push this oil latent refrigerant back up into the return line on the side of our compressor. And that is the complete circuit. So this will open for a moment. This check valve will check. Now, if this fails, then every time the gas pump goes to engage, you're going to see your evaporator pressures, you know, skyrocket for a second. And then they're going to come back down, right? So that's one way to know that your uh, gas pump has failed. But yeah, so th this is going to push up through and uh, you'll get the oil back to the compressor, which then it can get back into the separators. And you've got your oil sump over here to the side that's not depicted, but the oil separators drain into that sump, which then feeds back into the compressor. Uh, yeah, the separators on this are not used as reservoirs like they are in other uh, systems, these drain into a actual, a proper reservoir with heaters and such. So that is what the gas pump is doing. Now, in terms of troubleshooting the gas pump, the, typically the symptom you're going to have, you either have a low suction pressure issue or a high approach values, something along those lines, right? Uh, meaning that you're just not you're not properly transferring heat, even though your your liquid level in uh, feedback is showing that you're correct, right? You're at the proper liquid level set point based off of the liquid level sensor, and that's working fine, but you're not actually having proper refrigerant pressure on the suction or on the, the evaporator, and your approach will be running higher than it's supposed to be. So those are evidence that your oil uh, latent in the evaporator and you're not transferring heat properly, okay? That would be one symptom you could deal with. Another symptom would be you just flat out migrated, which happens with these. Uh, so if the oil migrates out of the sump into the evaporator, then you're going to have a... Uh, you may have an oil uh, a level safety alarm that won't let the compressor start or it, as soon as it goes to turn over, whatever little bit of oil is in there pushes right out and you trigger the alarm. So in that particular case, I will usually add a little bit of oil, just enough to allow, to, allow it to come online safely. And then I need to, we need to verify the gas pump is functioning. So... Part of doing that is, are the solenoid valves working? Are they energizing in the timing sequence that they're supposed to? And if we have our discharge gas and our um, evaporator vent line both energizing simultaneously, well, that's a problem, right? Those can't, one is supposed to close before the other one opens. So those are some things that we're looking for in terms of the sequence of operations and what is the timing on that to trigger those valves so that everything you know moves correctly. And that, that's going to be like in terms of troubleshooting, that is your troubleshooting process. It's monitoring the sequence that the valves are firing in, making sure the valves are firing. And we need to make sure that our uh, one, the check valve hasn't gotten stuck it's actually allowing liquid to drain in. 
We also need to make sure that the vent line is also opening. So maybe you've got a good coil, but the valve itself could fail. In that particular case, you're not going to get that gas chamber to fill up with liquid refrigerant properly, which is going to limit your ability to actually get that oil to return. So that would be uh, something else to monitor for is are we, is that valve actually being able, is, is the valve actually opening to allow the uh, drain process to happen? And then you'll, I mean, you, you know when that discharge line opens because it's, it's a pretty sudden hit and like it has, it's that high pressure coming in, hitting there and then pushing through there, pushing all of that, um, that refrigerant, oil latent refrigerant back to the compressor. So is that, pro are those valves opening? You know, maybe your gas valve is working, but the return valve up at the compressor isn't. Maybe there's an issue there or vice versa, right? So you're not hearing that high pressure gas actually move through the system because if the return valve doesn't open, you'll hear the, the gas valve open and it'll be a momentary thing, but it won't be like a, it won't, you won't hear the flow of it pushing back up. It'll just be a momentary kind of bump sound and it pressurizes that that chamber without actually allowing it to flow back um and it'll it, it'll be a, a similar or it, if the discharge the hot if the condenser gas valve is not working then you just won't hear that noise at all uh, you may hear the compressor valve open and it's pulling into the direct suction there of the compressor so there will be some kind of flow but you're not going to hear that hot gas pushing that refrigerant through there uh, so those would be some some symptoms and what you're looking for and how that sequence is is actually functioning to try to verify is this gas pump actually working or not if you're not already in chiller academy i'd really encourage you to go check it out just think about it right uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 